Hi all, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This video is a part 3 of the security services and mechanisms topic. So let's get started. In the previous video, we covered the first four security mechanisms. In this video, we are going to cover the remaining four security mechanisms that are digital signature, authentication exchange, notarization, and access control. Let's start with the first one, which is digital signature. Let's understand using some graphics. Before moving forward, I want to tell you guys about the color coding scheme that we will be using in the graphics to make them easy to understand. So from now on, objects surrounded by a pink border will be related to Alice and the ones surrounded by a blue border will be related to Bob. Having understood this, let's continue our topic. So in digital signature, the sender uses a signing algorithm to sign the message. So here, Alice uses a signing algorithm which takes two inputs. First is a message and the second is a private key of Alice. The lock symbol is used to indicate a private key. As you can see, it is surrounded by a pink border, indicating that it is a private key of Alice. You may be wondering, what is this private key? Because till now, we had been using a secret key, right? So a private key is a key that is only known to Alice. It is not known to Bob. It is private to Alice, hence giving it its name, private key. This was a very abstract way of explaining the concept of private key. We will cover this topic in details in future videos, but for the time being, this abstract explanation is enough to understand the topic. So taking these inputs, the signing algorithm generates a digital signature. Now Alice adds this digital signature to the message and sends it to Bob. Now Bob uses a verification algorithm to authenticate the message. So Bob uses a verification algorithm which takes three arguments. First is a message, the second is a digital signature of Alice and the third is a public key of Alice. The megaphone or the speaker symbol indicates it is a public key. As the previous abstract explanation, a public key is a key that is known to the general public. Taking these three inputs, it tells us that whether the digital signature is valid or not. If the digital signature is valid, then it authenticates Alice, else the message is invalid. So this was all about digital signature. As you can see that Alice was having two keys in this case. One was a private key and the other was a public key. In cryptography, such systems are called public key cryptosystems. We will cover this topic in greater detail in the future videos. Now let's move to the next mechanism, which is authentication exchange. In authentication exchange, entities exchange some messages to prove their identity to each other. Let's call our Alice Bob example back. Your Alice first gives her address to Bob. After receiving Alice's address, Bob generates a nonce. So a nonce is a time varying random number that is used only once. So Bob uses a nonce generator to generate a one time nonce. Let's call it RB. Now Bob sends this nonce to Alice. After receiving Bob's nonce, Alice generates her own nonce denoted by RA. Now Alice prepends her nonce after Bob's nonce and using her secret key encrypts the message and send it to Bob. Now Bob uses his secret key to decrypt the message. Since the nonce is the same that he had sent, Alice is now authenticated. Now Bob shuffles the messages so that RB is now ahead of RA, encrypts it and sends it to Alice. Alice decrypts it and verifies the nonce. With this, Bob is also authenticated. So we can see that by exchanging some messages, Alice and Bob have authenticated each other. Such kind of systems are called challenge response protocols, which we will again cover in greater detail in future videos. Let's move to the next security mechanism, which is notarization. So in notarization, we select a trusted third party to control communication between two parties. Let's call our Alice Bob example back to understand it better. Here we have a trusted third party which acts as a mediator between Alice and Bob. So whenever Alice wants to send a message to Bob, she sends a message to the third party and the third party forwards the message to Bob. Once the message is delivered, the third party generates a delivery proof of the message and sends it to Alice. Similarly, it generates an origin proof for Bob. Since both Alice and Bob have their respective proofs, in the future neither of them can deny sending or receiving the messages. Hence, notarization avoids repudiation security attack. This is all about notarization. The next and the last one is access control. So in access control, we enforce access rights to resources. Let's call a Alice Bob example back. So here, Bob has a server that receives messages. But as we know, we need to have access control to avoid DOS attacks. We have covered DOS attacks in our previous videos. Link in the i button, do watch it if you haven't. So here, in the access control mechanism, we can use any authentication system such as passwords or PIN to authenticate the user and then provide access to the authenticated user. 
So Alice sends her credentials to the server to authenticate her. Once her credentials are validated, the server provides access to her. Since Alice has the access, she can now send messages to the server. So we can see that the server allows only messages from authenticated entities, thus avoiding DOS attacks. With this, we have successfully completed all the security mechanisms. Let's have a recap of all the things we have covered. So we started with security attacks, where we covered all the 7 security attacks. Then we covered all the 5 security services. And today, we completed all the 8 security mechanisms. When we group all 3, we have the OSI security architecture. So OSI security architecture provides a systematic approach of organizing the task of providing security, which starts with understanding the security attacks and then having security services to provide a specific kind of protection to system resources. And then we have security mechanisms that tell us how to implement the services. So that's it for the video guys. Thanks for watching the video and if you have any doubt, please do let us know in the comment section below and if you have found the video helpful, then do like and share the video with your friends and subscribe to be the best channel for more such videos. Meet you in the next video of the CSS series. Bye bye.